Hi guys, welcome to today's lesson. We're looking at probability trees, um, which we've already looked at these slightly, but these are with multi-stage events, um, sometimes when we are having replacement and non-replacement questions. So this will be a slightly longer uh, lesson, um, but certainly worthwhile going through. Um, very typical in HSC. So let's look at a question. Um, let's say, for example, we roll um, two coins. So we've done this question before. Um, and then we're going to look very briefly at the product rule first with this. So my first coin is going to have a head or a tail on it. My second coin is going to have a head or a tail on it. Now we've looked at questions like this already and we said what's the probability that I get both heads. That was all the way back in the very first lesson of this unit. Um, and we counted and we said okay well here we have two heads. We have a head, tail, tail, head and two tails. So I've got one chance in four chances. Okay so one out of four. So what does the probability tree in this case, what's going to be different? Well often what's going to happen is that the probabilities will not be even chance. In this case it is, so it works out nicely. That means that we have a half a chance for all of these probabilities happening. Because it's an even chance, there's the same chance, we don't need to write the probabilities on there. However, for this example I'm going to, because what I'm going to show you is how we get one quarter directly from the tree. Now, the product rule says that as you go along the branch, we multiply the probabilities. So for two heads, we would do a half times a half, which we know is a quarter, and voila, you can see that's the same answer as what we had originally. Now, had we had that question, um, probability of, let's say, exactly one head, again, here, because it was even probability, I can say um, we've got one head here, one head here, so I have two out of four chances, or one in two chances. So how would I do that um, using arithmetic? Well, in this case, I've got a head and a tail, so that's a half times a half. So that's the probability of getting the head and tail the first time. And then I've got another probability of getting a tail and a head, so I've got a half times a half. So at the moment, I've got one quarter here and one quarter here. So how do you think we can get the answer of two quarters above? Well, we're going to add them. And that brings a second rule that as if I need to have more than one probability, we simply plus those together, which gives us the two quarters or a half. So I guess what I'm trying to come across with a probability tree is the rules as you go along the branch, we multiply. But if I need to add, uh, have separate branches, we can plus those branches together. Now, obviously, with a normal probability like this question where it's all even chance, then, you know, that's going to be cool. We just do it the normal way. But you might have a biased coin. You know, you might have something where it says, instead of it being um, an even chance for getting a head and a tail, it might say that uh, the probability of getting a head is, let's say, 0 0.7, which means a tail will be 0 0.3 which means that I can no longer just count up these things here because I have different probabilities of heads and tails. So what you would have to do if I was looking for the probability of two heads, I'd have to do it this way where I'd say it would be 0 0.7 times 0 0.7, which is 0 0.49. If I wanted, um, maybe they are the same. So both heads or both tails. Then I could do the tails one, which is going to be 0 0.09, and then I would add those two together. So you can see the reason why we need to have trees. So let's go looking at a question to help us out with. So we've got here, um, actually I'm not going to do that question, that was pretty much the question that we just did. Looking at this question it says, finding the probability of three events. Joshua has a 0.6 chance of winning a set of tennis against Harry. Find the probability of Joshua winning three sets in a row or, winning, or Harry winning three sets in a row. 
So if I drew a tree, we can say that, um, now I guess we can say Harry wins or Josh wins. They're the two options. That's the first game. The second game, we're going to have either Harry winning or Josh winning. Harry winning or Josh winning. That's the second game. And in the third game of the tennis, we're again going to have Harry or Josh, Harry or Josh, Harry or Josh, Harry or Josh. That's my third game. Which brings about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different combinations, which makes sense because I've got two lots, two com um, so outcomes, and I'm doing it three times, therefore two times two times two is eight. So that works out. Now, unfortunately, because it's 0 0.6 chance for Joshua winning, I can't just go through here and say, oh, it's going to be one chance out of eight. That would be if it was 0 0.5 chance for each of them, it would be even chances. But this is a little bit more um, biased. So, Joshua has 0 0.6 chance of winning, which means Harry has 0 0.4. Now, in this case, the chance of, of Joshua winning does not change. So, it's always going to be 0 0.4 for Harry. Now, in a normal question, if there was more than just Joshua winning 3 or Harry winning 3, I would probably go ahead and put the 0 0.4, 0 0.6 on absolutely every single one here. But in this case, I'm just looking for Josh winning three and Harry winning three. So Josh winning three, I'm going to put his probabilities down here. And I've already got Harry's on there as well. Again, if you want to go ahead and put the 0.4s on every single one, that's up to you. But for part A, we're looking for the probability of Josh winning three times in a row. Well, Josh winning three times in a row will happen, I'm going to do this in a light blue color, will be down here, Josh, 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 which means I'm going to have 0 0.6, and remember we times as we go along the branches, 0 0.6 times 0 0.6, or 0 0.6 cubed, and if I do that, we're going to have the answer of 0 0.6. 216. You could put it as a fraction, but I kind of like decimals at this point. Unless, of course, it's a, it's a you know, a um, recurring decimal or something else, else like that. B. Harry winning three. Well, that would be the op. Oh, well, it wouldn't be the opposite, would it? It'd be 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.4. So, probability of Harry winning three would be 0 0.4. Again, I'm going along the branch 0 0.4 times 0 0.4. In that case, it's 0 0.4 cubed, or 0.4 times 0.4 times 0.4, and that gives us 0 0.064. Now, that's for those, so that was 0 0.064, um, that was 0 0.216. Now, if you wanted to find the probability um, that either Josh wins all three, or Harry wins all three, that means you've got two separate ones, you would then add those together, okay? But not in this particular question. Okay, now let's look at a, uh, another type of question. Now this is a bit more challenging, I like this question, uh, apart from the last one. The last one's quite tough. Um, this is what I would refer to as a non-replacement question. All right, so non-replacement. Now the first part is usually quite simple. It's asking for the probability of the first two. So we've got five men and three women are living on an island, but not all will be able to stay. If one person is selected at random, what is the probability that this person is a female? Well, there are three females out of, we've got eight altogether five men and three women. Males, I've got five out of eight, and you can see that they would add together to give the eight out of eight. So for the first question, the probability that I'm just gonna get a female to leave the island would be three in eight chances. Part two says, 
Two people will be randomly selected to leave the island. Copy the tree diagram into your writing booklet and complete the diagram by writing the probabilities on the branches. That's the first part. Now, notice this is where this gets a little bit more complicated. That if I chose a female the first time, now on the island, I've only got two females left out of seven people because obviously there were eight, but I took one and they've left the island. So in this case, we've got two in seven. And this is what I mean by non-replacement, okay? Because once I made my first selection, they're gone. They're not being replaced. They're off the island. So I've got two in seven. I've still got five men or five male out of seven. And looking here, two plus five is seven, and that makes a seven out of seven. But what happens in the first instance that I didn't choose a female? Let's say, for example, a male left the island first of all. Well, that would mean that there are still three female on the island out of seven. However, there'd be one less male, wouldn't there? Because one's already gone. So I'd have four out of seven. And again, you can see that makes up seven over seven. So hopefully you can see why this gets a little bit challenging. But the good thing is once you've done that part, Usually the rest of it's easy because if I want both females, then I can just times along the branches or both males times on the branches. If I need to have separate ones, I can add the branches together. So that was part one done. Um, so one's done there. Now two says calculate the probability that the selection includes exactly one female. So in this instance, we've got two females. Here I've got a female and a male, a male and a female, and two males. So how many ways can I get exactly one female? Well, that would work here, and that would work here. Okay, so if I do the first one for female and male, that means I'm going the 3 eighths times the 5 sevenths. So 3 eighths times the 5 sevenths. That's the first one, which would give me 15 out of 56. The second one would be um, the male and then the female. So 5 eighths times 3 sevenths. So 5 eighths times 3 sevenths. And that would give me 15 out of 56. So I've got two different branches here. Remember I said if you need to have one, more than one branch, we're going to plus the branches together. So I'm going to add those two amounts to get 30 out of 56, um, which I could then simplify down if I wanted to, to get 15 over 28 as my final answer. Alrighty. Now look, to be honest with you, most of the questions that you do, that's going to be it. Okay. The last question though, that's a really tough question. That's going into a band five to band six question. Okay. So part three, which we'll do it, but it is pretty challenging. Antoinette is one of the women on the island. Before the two people are randomly selected to leave, Antoinette calculates her chance of remaining on the island. She concludes that she has a good chance of remaining. Do you agree and justify? Now actually, remember, remember this question, it actually isn't as hard as I thought. So what we're gonna look at, it says the probability of her remaining. Now remember, it doesn't matter who I pick in terms of a male and a female in this case. So I'm just looking for the probability that she remains on the island. So what's the probability she remains on the island on the first um, choice? Well, there are eight people, aren't there? So the probability she remains will be seven out of eight. That's because one person goes. Then the probability of her remaining the second time will be six out of seven which means she has 42 out of 56, which I believe is three out of four. Therefore, she has a good chance, chance of remaining, which I should have said, yes, I do agree. So actually that wasn't too hard. I was thinking about, about a different question. So again, we're looking at the probability she remains, which was seven out of eight times six out of seven. I guess the, the trap there is that people think it's to do with the female part, but it's not because that third part, it doesn't matter who gets chosen, male or female, therefore it's out of the whole lot, which is a seven eighths and then six sevenths. 
Okay, last question. Oh, it's been long, I apologize. Moheb owns five red and seven blue ties, which means we've got 12 ties altogether. He chooses a tie at random for himself and puts it on. He then chooses another tie at random from the remaining ties and gives it to his brother. Okay, so automatically you can see this is a non replacement. So he's taking one tie for himself and one tie for his brother. Okay, therefore there are two ties being taken altogether. So the first part, it's one mark, says what's the probability that Moheb chooses a red tie for himself? So this is just a normal probability. Um, there are five out of 12 red ties. There are seven out of 12 blue ties, which means the answer for the first part is just five out of 12. Okay, that's very common for the HSC question to get that first question. The second question says, copy the tree diagram and then complete your tree diagram by writing the correct probabilities. Okay, so this is a non-replacement, which means that had I taken a red tie the first time, I've only got four red ties out of 11 ties. Remember, I've already taken a red tie out, therefore there are only 11 ties left over, of which four would be red. And of course, the seven are still remaining of the blue. 7 plus 4 is 11, that works out. Let's put the ties back in. Let's say, for example, we took a blue tie the first time, which means there must still be 5 out of 11 ties that are red. Remember, one tie was taken, that was a blue tie, therefore there are 5 left over. And therefore there will be 6 out of 11 which makes five plus six is 11, that works out. So now we've answered the second question. I always think that's the hardest question. The third question, and it's really important to always put your probabilities on, because the third question we marked off your diagram, okay? Calculate the probability that both of the tires are the same color. So I'm looking for the probability that I get either both red, red, or both blue, blue which means I need to calculate the probability for both and then add them together. So the probability that I get both red, okay, it will be 5 twelfths times 4 elevenths. Remember, as we go along the branch, we multiply. That gives me 20 over 132. The probability that I get both blue, well, that would be the bottom one, so that's 7 twelfths times 6 elevenths, which is 42 over 132. And as previously mentioned, because I want to see them both happening, we're going to add those two numbers together to get 62 out of 132. And of course, I can put that into my calculator just to make sure um, that's most simplified. We get 31 out of 66. Or again, you could probably put that as a decimal, but it's an ugly decimal, so I'd leave it as the fraction. Um, you can put it straight into your calculator from this point. Okay, that's no problems as well. But we've got our answer, and that's a really typical HSC question. Okay, look, I hope this made a bit of sense. Tree diagrams can get a little bit tricky. Just need to make sure, is it a replacement or a non-replacement question? Okay, that can be a big factor in getting these questions right. And the other thing is that you need to remember, as you go along the branch, we always multiply. But if I need separate branches, we then plus them together. Have an awesome day, guys. Make sure you get the questions done. Any questions, let me know. Hopefully it made sense.